Hi, I'm Mike Santolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Top 10 Trader, and I'm here with a brief video on how to make the most out of Top 10 Trader for newer subscribers. Thank you very much for giving us a chance. I think you're gonna really like what you see here. Um, but just first off the bat, one of the things that does differentiate us here at Cabot is we do answer subscriber questions directly over email. So if you have a question about the advisory or a stock in the advisor, anything like that, don't hesitate to reach out, Mike at CabotWealth.com. I'm also on Twitter, at Mike Santolo. Of course, you get what you pay for, but I usually do tweet out a few times a week and retweet some other uh, Cabot analysts about some interesting stuff we're seeing in the market, okay? So Top 10 Trader is really a great, great source of new ideas, but it's so much more than that. We're not just dumping 10 names you know, in your lap every week, okay? It's really about finding where the big money is flowing, okay? I know for the people who like top 10, they love it. It's always been our advisory that's had the highest percentage of professionals, whether it's brokers or you know money managers that do subscribe because it is fairly comprehensive, okay? But it's also meant for you know the average Joe or Jane as well, all right? Now, like I said earlier, it's finding where the big money is flowing. We're really screening for the strongest stocks in the market. We do take out the thinner stuff that has no sponsorship. Um, but we're looking for a mix of short and longer term relative strength, along with some know-how. Usually we run our screens, we're getting anywhere from a few dozen to maybe over 100 stocks, and we kind of pare the list down from there each and every week, okay? The good thing about, you know, people ask the difference between top 10 trader and growth investor. The good thing is that top 10 is really completely unbiased. I am a growth guy. I grew up a growth guy. I'll always be a growth guy. But top 10, if it's commodities, if it's gold, if it is software, if it's recent IPOs, if it's, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, top 10 will highlight it, okay? And we're really trying to find where Fidelity and T. Rowe Price and whoever are buying stocks. So, you know, that sort of thing. That's really the, the gold of it, that if you keep in touch with top 10, if you're following the list every week, you're going to know what is in favor and what might be breaking down out of favor, okay? That's really the, the main value of it, okay? So let's just go right here into the issue. And I just want to go through a couple of things so people know um, what's going on. So this is, you know, that every week on page one, it's just going to be a little bit of an intro section here about what happened in the market last week. And then over here, I just want to start with this little, we call this the market monitor, the current market outlook. It's just a quick and dirty way that kind of boils down what the market timing stance is from Cabot Growth Investor, which is really a mix of trend following for the market, but also importantly, the action of leading top 10 type stocks. Okay, if stocks are acting well and the market's in an uptrend, we're bullish. Obviously, if we're in a steep downtrend like 2022, we're gonna tell you, hey, we're negative on the market, focus more on building a watch list or keeping some positions small. Of course, there usually will be a group or two that can counter trend in a bear. Maybe it's gold, maybe it's housing if rates are coming down, stuff like that. Um, and that those will show up in top 10. But for the most part, we're gonna let people know. We're not just feeding you know money into a meat grinder if the environment isn't supportive, okay? Now going down further, it's pretty self-explanatory. Here's gonna be your list of stocks for the week. Okay, these are you know the list with a suggested buy range and loss limit, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. I will just say what I want to point out here is we do highlight one as the top pick. The goal is not to buy, for most people, is not to buy 10 stocks a week, okay? The goal is to get a good idea or two or three every week or two or three, okay? And if you do that, it's going to be more than worth the price, okay? It's a lot of information. It's a lot of good research that you're going to have at your fingertips that a lot of professionals really like. But if you're looking for a place to start, you would start with the top pick that week. And then I usually advise people to go through the list and just see, and we'll obviously highlight this too, if there's any sort of new theme that's emerging, whether it's a sector or obviously like AI, as I'm recording this, just got hot recently, you know, stuff like that, you know, do some research, or if there's um, an area that you want exposure to, housing, commodities, whatever, all of a sudden a couple oil stocks show up, you might want to dig into those, okay? Now, each stock is going to have the following sections, okay? In this case, this is ASML, just is from late May of 2023. Okay, the first section is why the strength, which is pretty self-explanatory. We're not gonna be boilerplating you. We're not just gonna tell you it's a semiconductor or chip equipment manufacturer. We'll tell you that so you know the basics, but we really wanna tell you why the stock is strong. Why is it hitting new highs? Is it the group? Was it their recent earnings release? Did What did management say in the conference call? We do do some research here and really try to give you the elevator pitch, not just of the overall story, but what has been going on more recently in terms of the fundamentals or maybe even an analyst upgrade, something like that. Could be M&A rumors for all we know, but we will relay that to you so you get a kind of a feel for what is going on. And then below here, we have the technical analysis section. Just like in the first section, we're not gonna you know, tell you the gross margin is 
52.914%. We're not going to get into those details and we're not going to go day by day technical analysis analyzing each bar. But we will tell you kind of what's been going on the last six months and anything notable, whether it's a breakout, big earnings day, shakeout. OK, obviously, all these stocks are strong, so we probably won't be talking about, you know, really bad performance. But we'll kind of let you know where it's been and where we think it might be going. OK, and then at the top here, I just want to kind of go back up here. You have your buy range and you have your loss limit. And that's obviously self-explanatory. A couple of things. The buy range can be uh, lower, higher, or right where the stock is, okay? It's not a huge range. We're not gonna give you a 20% range. It's usually, you know, four or 5% sort of range. Um, we might usually try to, you know, buy on a pullback. I would say that's the norm. Sometimes we think it's buyable right there. And sometimes even we think it's buyable above where it is. Maybe it's been setting up in sort of a launching pad and we're thinking, hey, if it can break out or if it gaps on earnings or something like that, it could start a sustained run. And of course, then you have your initial loss limits just to keep losses small. And our loss limits are usually in the kind of in the eight to 15% range. It depends on the chart, depends on the volatility of the stock. Okay, it's gonna vary, but that's those are kind of the numbers there. Okay, you're also gonna have some fundamental numbers here. This is, you know, PEs, the last four quarters of sales growth, earnings growth, sales figures and earnings figures, some profit margins, things like that, just to give you a flavor for, you know, what you're buying, whether it's, you know, really small, big, you know, how fast is it really growing? Is there acceleration or deceleration? And of course, we will be telling you any salient points in the copy it's, itself. And of course, then you got some charts, you know, daily chart, weekly chart, again, just so you can kind of get a look at it, um, where it's going. This is the issue itself. We publish this 50 times a year, if you can believe it. We take two weeks off a year. Um, and it comes out Monday after the close. If Monday's a holiday, it'll be Tuesday after the close, okay? Um, so that's really what it gets down to. And every stock is going to have its own page here, its own why the strength, its own technical analysis. It's obviously its own ranges and loss limit suggestions as well as the numbers. OK, at the back end uh, of the issue, um, it's usually usually it's a page. Sometimes it gets a little bit longer if the market's good. But what you have here is just, again, kind of a quick follow up section um, in terms of previously recommended stocks. Now, we've talked about the buy ranges. To us, the buy ranges are valid for two weeks. I don't pretend to know what the hell the stock's going to be doing two months from now. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But when we're looking at the chart, we're sort of more intermediate term. We think those buy ranges are valid for two weeks. If a stock trades within that, it's going to go in this table at the back of the issue as a hold. Okay, We could always re-recommend it three weeks later, four weeks later, five, whatever, if we think there's another halfway decent entry point, if the stock remains strong. Sometimes we missed our entry point, which I'll get into in a second, and we might re-recommend it a couple weeks later if we think you know there's an advantageous entry point and the stock still looks good. Okay, so we'll follow this up every single week. And you can see that you know the list is actually a decent size here. The next column here, or the next section, I should say, is this weight section, which just means the stock hasn't traded within its buy range yet. Again, it has two weeks to do so, but we might be looking for a pullback. In this case, Flex Limited hasn't pulled back yet. Okay, so it's kind of a good thing for the stock, but we're trying to get our price and we figure if we miss it, we'll get in some other time or there's other stocks to find. We're not going to go chase every single stock just because it was strong that week. Okay, of course, then you have the sell recommendations, things that will be taking profits. It's We call it top 10 trader. Ideally, what we like to do is take some partial profits on the way up and ideally ride um, you know, the stock for six or nine months from there if it wants to keep acting well. But we will bang out some profits here and there. Obviously, we'll cut losses short too. Um, but these are the, the, the sell recommendations. And the last little section here is called dropped. Now, dropped, it's a little confusing, but dropped just means it didn't trade within the buy range within two weeks. Again, sometimes that's a good thing. It means the stock didn't pull back and kept running, good for the stock anyway. Um, again, we could re-recommend it down the road, but in the meantime, if we didn't get our price, we'll just drop it from coverage and go on. If you happen to buy it and you didn't stick to the buy range, but you really wanted to get in and you own it and we drop it, that happens all the time. Don't hesitate to shoot me an email again, micacabotwealth.com if you have a question, okay? That's really the issue itself and how to use it. I'm not going to show you it to you here, but we also have a Friday movers and shakers update, we call it. It comes out Friday morning, usually no later than noon Eastern time. And we'll kind of review the week to that point. What's going on in the market? Has anything changed with the market's trends, with leadership, stuff like that? And then we'll go through some of these previously recommended stocks and say, hey, this might look good. Hey, this uh, this one might look like a good buy. If you do, here's a suggested range and stop. It's kind of some added content. 
Obviously, we'll also talk about some cells. And I think most important in the movers and shakers update is we will go through here and not every stock, but if a stock starts to act a little funky or it's extended, we might tell you to either take partial profits and or put in a mental stop or you can use it in the market stop. It's up to you for these stocks. So we might say, hey, it's a hold, but you know we have a stop here at 45 or something like that. And we update those every week. And once there's a stop in place, we'll continue to update it. We're not just going to erase it and, and ignore it the next week, that sort of thing, okay? So that's Top 10 Trader in a nutshell. It's a lot of information, great information. We do a lot of research every weekend. I you know spend hours at work. And I think the biggest thing I can say about it is we started this publication about 20 years ago. It has been a big, big factor in me helping me with my own research, whether it's Growth Investor Top 10, and staying on top of what is really out there, new issues, new sectors, new themes, where the money is flowing, rotation. I can't tell you that doing this every week, of course, I'm in there writing it and doing the research, but whether you're doing that or just reading the publication, you will be, no question, on the big winners of any market advance, whether it's cyclicals, oil, late stage stuff, even sometimes a defensive name, aerospace, or whether you do have you know, biotech, retail, medical, new IPOs, whatever is working will show up in top 10 trader. I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, last thing, once more, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email, email me at mike at cabotwealth.com. Thank you very much and best of luck.